Hi there. It's Psychic Cynthia again, Spiritual Psychic Cynthia Killian. And welcome back to part two of our COVID-19 rune reading video. Um, and this is part two of the rune reading that I did on March 18th, 2020, regarding the COVID-19 crisis situation. Uh, I asked the runes, I asked the ancestors, the guides, the masters, you know, what is going on here? What is it we need to know? Where is this headed? Um, and, and I did this just for myself, okay? I wasn't intending at the time necessarily to make a video. I just wanted to know. Um, and I was quite shocked by the reading, actually. Um, so anyway, you can see the runes at the beginning. I'm putting the picture. Here's the reading. The whole reading. It's just a four rune reading. And for those of you who missed my short explanation in part one of this video, um, hopefully you know already what the runes are. But if you don't, uh, this is an ancient magical alphabet and divination system. And there are 24 runes, and each one of these runes represents a principle and power of nature, basically a building block of the universe itself. And that's why we can use the runes in our uh, shamanism and our magic and meditation to create change. And we can also do readings with them. And the runes do very well, I find, for uh, a lot of different kinds of readings. But especially if we want to read about a, a collective situation, the runes are, are quite well at that. And I feel superior to many other divination tools for that. Uh, the only tool that I think that equals it, perhaps, is the I Ching in that regard. Uh, and maybe I'll do a separate video using that some other time. But uh, the runes are kind of my jam these days. So <laughs> um, in addition to being a psychic medium, an old-fashioned channel or a psychic uh, who helps people with their problems and their current issues and helps you speak with your ancestors and those who have gone on. Uh, I do rune readings sometimes too. And uh, anyway, this is a rune reading for us all. This is part two. Uh, if you haven't already watched part one, you might want to do that. But then again, I believe that destiny and fate has brought you here to this video today. So even if you haven't already watched part one, you're exactly where you need to be right now. With this video so stay tuned you can always go back and watch part one later if you want to um, so uh, just to uh, summarize what we've already covered because we've covered the first two rune reading two runes in this reading uh, so at number one in this rune reading was Hagal the rune of disruption the hellstorm I mean uh, you know this is a rune of an act of God as we call it or the universe and it happens to be in the position in the reading that shows the will of the gods, you know, or what the collective energies are trying to accomplish here. Um, now, keep in mind, this was two weeks ago, at least from the date I'm filming this video. Um, so already the runes were telling us, you know, they're telling us this is a major disruption. And, you know, you have to make change. We went to rune number two, which I spent a lot of time talking about in the first video because that's the ruin of shamanic initiation, death, and transformation. Um, and basically, I mean, just look at the first two runes in this reading. They're both saying that we're having to go through this difficult ordeal, many ordeals, and we have to experience a, a complete decimation and change of the way things used to be. We, everything is going through a metaphorical death right now. All of the old structures, all of the old patterns are being transformed. By the way, this is very similar, if you look astrologically, to the meaning of Pluto in Capricorn. And of course, we had earlier, not right now we don't, but we had Saturn in Capricorn, and we had Jupiter in, in Capricorn, and then Mars. So uh, you could even tie this Ren reading that I did in with the Western astrology. You could see how there's some similarities, um, but some differences here too, or maybe the runes are elaborating further. Um, so that, that's kind of just a very quick summary of what we've covered already, that um, 
you know, the Wrens are saying, the guides and the ancestors and the elves and the masters, they're saying this is a necessary happening. This, this COVID-19 crisis is something we must go through. We must, it is our initiation as a species, hopefully to higher awakening. Because as I talked about in the last video, not enough of us were awakening fast enough. Not enough of us on the planet. You know, it was just happening too slow. So uh, now, now we have this virus situation, this worldwide fear. Um, and, you know, all of the things that go along with that. And it's causing us to, uh, you know, it's painful. It's causing us to let go. We're going to have to let go. We're going to have to. It's going to be permanent change too, okay? I'm not saying that the way things are right now is going to be the permanent situation, but um, a lot of what we've had to let go of already will not come back, okay? So if you're in business, you know, or even if you're just a human being, all of us human beings, we need to understand that we're not going back to the way things were. We can't go back. We have to go forward to something new. That is the whole point of a shamanic initiation. Um, you know, you are stripped bare so that you can be remade, basically. And that's what this virus situation is doing. It's allowing us the opportunity to recreate ourselves eventually. Uh, so that that's a you know taking us back to the top, and I might add too that that rune you watched the the last one we talked about number two in the reading, which is uh, number thirteen in of the twenty four for those of you who are rune readers too uh, in the Elder Food Arc. So that that uh, you watch or some call it a watch, uh, that is the rune of the yew tree. I'm saying you y e w. Um, and it's really interesting, I think, if you, you look at what, you know, the yew tree is about botanically, because well, there's a lot we could say on that. But, but one thing that's very, I think, uh, applicable here, very interesting, is that the, the yew tree gives off these, uh, you know, if you have a bunch of them together, it gives off these no noxious fumes. Um, I mean, it's poisonous. So if you were to drink it or eat it or actually breathe in these fumes, it creates illness. But then that same illness can induce in some, um, well, visions. I mean, some people call them hallucinations, but it definitely could be shamanic visions. So isn't that interesting that, you know, this tree is a poison. It can induce illness, but it also can induce shamanic awakening. And, and that's kind of what's happening here, like both at the same time that, you know, a shamanic awakening is occurring through illness or just even the fear of possible illness. Um, so I wanted to add that in. Oh goodness, my phone is ringing. I picked up a hook. Let me do that real quick. I'll just, that's what hangups are for, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry if that was you calling, <laughs> but <laughs> we're not going to be answering the phone right now. Okay. So going on, um, that, those were the first two readings, and actually I was just talking about the, the rune Yuaj there. That was number two in this reading. We're going to go ahead and move on now, though, to the third run in our COVID-19 reading that I did on March 18th. And in this position, I mean, rune number three is supposed to show us the outcome. You know, in other words, where do the energies, you know, from rune num number one and two... You know, we go through what happens, the disruption in room number one, and then we're experiencing the shamanic death, which I believe this is where we're at right now. I'm filming this video on April 2nd, so I feel like in terms of this reading, what stages are we in? You know, asking myself that, we're in, we're in room number two, we're still in, we're undergoing the shamanic death, but you know, it's kind of like what comes next? When we look at run number three over here, or, you know, it's somehow connected, you know, it's a, it's a development. They're connected together, runs number two and run number three. So run number three here, let's look at that. 
And uh, you can see that this one, well, if you read Wrens, you would know this. Now, some of you, you know, a lot of you don't read Wrens, so you're not going to know that. Uh, this Wren is reversed. I want to say that right off the top. So it's the only one uh, in the reading that is reversed, and partly that is because it's the only one that can reverse. Some of the Wrens can reverse. In other words, they appear differently when they're upside down. So we have a reversal, and uh, reversals aren't usually looked at very favorably. Uh, the good news is that this rune in the third posi position is Odin's rune. I mean, look at this. This is uh, on Zeus. That's what it's called. And that word on Zeus actually can have a few different meanings, but it, it translates literally uh, sometimes to ancestor ancestor. Uh, it also can mean mouth um, or star. There's definitely a connection with ancestor and also it is considered to be Odin's rune which in this system Odin is uh, you know the symbol of the divine. Uh, the the universal energies here. Um, Ansus is, uh, you know, a rune of communication because, you know, it means mouth, too. So that's our, our speech. And, you know, right communication. You know, a proper flow of communication uh, with wisdom. Wisdom and inspiration coming through. And when Ansus is upright, uh, it means that flow of communication is happening well. It means that we are connected with our higher selves and we are listening to our ancestors. We are, we are open to their wisdom. We are open to the wisdom of the guides. You know, um, we have that, that deep grounded spiritual connection to following what we know is right inside. Um, so, that's good. I mean, when that is flowing in that way, right? Uh, it's a very spiritual ruin showing here. You know, this is what this is all working towards, uh, but it's reversed. The ruin is reversed. So um, it shows me here that the next stage in what is going to happen, I mean, and maybe it's already happening because I'm, I'm doing this video two weeks after I drew this. I think, you know, it's only just begun if it has begun. Um, this shows a block in communication. It shows that um, maybe the truth is not being spoken, that false facts are being put forth. Um, and again, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm just, I'm just reporting to you, reading what is here in the ruins. Um, when on Zeus is reversed, it does show possibly a denial of the truth. Let me see what other notes I have here about this, uh, if it's anything. Okay. Um, you know, I'd written down false speech. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, that's what on Zeus reverse can mean is false speech. So I do believe that many of us have the sense that there is at least some misinformation out there. Um, Although what it is, we don't know. And what the truth is, we don't know. I mean, I almost think the Wrens are just commenting on that here. They're just saying, you know, there is a lot of misinformation and people are overwhelmed with that, you know, because it's hard to know, like, what all is true. Um, and it's certainly, you know, I think especially when we start looking at the projections, you know, we've been hearing, at least at the time I'm making this video, I mean, like this week, you know, there are a lot of projections being released. Um, and it is important to remember that, you know, projections are just like prophecy. I mean, uh, they are, you know, they are projections, okay? So we don't know, we don't know what's going to happen with that because they're conceptual is what I'm saying. Uh, now we can look at actual numbers of things that have happened and, and you know, that's very informative then. Um, but, you know, with the on Zeus rune here, I, I think that, you know, my sense is you have to learn to lean into your higher self now. We, we as a collective, I guess, not just you, but yes, you and me and everyone, um, 
we're going to need to start connecting more with the higher self. And you don't have to be religious to do that. You don't even really have to think of yourself as spiritual. Um, but the other thing, you know, with on Zeus being reversed, it can show a great deal of emotional chaos, maybe even mental illness. And, it, and I do believe we're still in the early stages of this on Zeus reverse. So people are coming unglued. And maybe the runes are indicating here it's going to get worse in that regards than better. This isn't really, I feel, speaking about the virus itself. You know, because this is, um, I mean, I guess it could be. It it's, means mouth. Maybe it's talking about, you know, the idea that this could be shared that way. I don't know. I feel it's more about the mental and emotional health and saying that, well, we're disconnected. That's what it's saying. As a collective, you know, not every individual and probably not even all of you watching this video. A lot of you watching this video are very connected with spirit, with your guides. I know that. Um, but even those of us who connect with their guides, we're being called to go deeper, to listen, to commune with the ancestors themselves. And I know I keep talking about the ancestors a lot, but they're calling to us. You know, they have been through some tough stuff. They can help us with this. You know, think about how long and how far back those ancestral lines go. I mean, even before written history, think about Atlantis. Think about Lemuria. Think about the ancient days. There's so much collective ancestral wisdom we can draw upon, but we're not. That's what this rune is saying. We're not doing that yet. Um, and as a result, there is emotional and mental chaos and breakdown. Uh, you might even look at the Ren before it as being somehow connected because you had the Yuaj Ren. And another meaning for that Ren uh, can be Kundalini awakening. So you can think of consciousness is, you know, actually Kundalini isn't consciousness itself. It's energy. So this energy is all being activated within us. But then... If we're not communicating with our higher selves, in other words, if your earthly self and your emotional body is not lining up with that higher self, then when all this energy comes up, you don't know what to do with it and you go batshit crazy, <laughs> okay? That's what I'm saying. That, that's happening now. People are going crazy. Um, so, you know, th these were the original three runs that I drew for my reading. I, initially, I said, I'm just going to draw three runs. Let's see what they say and you know if I had just stopped here run number three would be it for any potential outcome and I mean it really is not a very hopeful reading at this point <laughs> okay it's just like hey everything's breaking down and people are going to go crazy unless they attune with their higher selves I mean there's a warning in that last run to start listening to one's guides but it's saying hey people aren't listening to their guides it's saying people aren't communicating with their higher selves. That's why it's reversed. Um, you know, it's talking about a lack of emotional and mental and spiritual alignment. And that's not what we want to have happen after this initiation. I mean, hopefully we can go through this ordeal and, and get something good out of it. Um, so I did ask the runes, I mean, what will come after this? I mean, what if, what if, I asked them, what if we choose enough of us, and I don't know how many that's going to be, what the magic number is, but if what if more of us choose to align with their higher selves? What if we, we choose to communicate with the ancestors to begin remembering them again through ceremony and ritual and so on? Um, what if more of us, you know, start to do that? What, what might this lead to for our world? And thank goodness I asked that question. Uh, because the fourth run I draw or drew is rather encouraging. So here is where we see the hope, literally the light at the end of the tunnel. And let me bring that up here. This is rune number four. And again, in the rune reading that I did for uh, regarding COVID-19 crisis worldwide, I did this reading on March 18th, 2020. And uh, you can look at this run 
this this rune as being in the final outcome position, if you want to call it that, there really is no such thing as a final outcome because energies always continue moving forward, but it's more of a long-term outcome, possibly. And again, this is if more of us start to awaken, we choose to listen to our higher selves, to connect with higher meaning, to communicate more clearly from the higher self, to remember the ancestors and guides. So if we do that, here is the possible outcome. This is the Saul rune, Saul, or Sawilo. This is uh, the rune of light, light. It means sun, and it also means soul. And to the ancient northern people, uh, the sun is feminine. I think that's very important here, that this is a feminine rune. It represents the feminine principle of solar light. And some of you may not be familiar with that feminine principle of solar light. To northern people, the sun is feminine because it brings life. It brings nurturing. When you live in the north and you don't have sunlight very much, uh, the sun is a mother. She is not a harsh, searing force. She is a nurturing, warming. She is the soul. Your soul, my soul, and in this case, the collective soul of humanity. Um, so what can come out of this? I might even say it's very likely. I mean, there's always choice until it's actually happened. There's always free will. Um, but what can come out of this is a, a reawakening of that divine feminine energy. A realigning, a realization of the divine light. This is the light at the end of the tunnel. This rune shows me that there is hope in spite of the earlier rains, runes in the reading, in spite of the ordeals and hardships we will have to endure, in spite of the emotional suffering and grieving and the letting go. Um, you know, I really think from looking at this reading that the worst part of what we will have to endure will not be the physical death. It will not be the loss through the virus. I mean, those things are terrible in some ways. Um, but it will be the emotional challenges that we have to endure, the pain and also the attachments that we will have to let go of. Um, because, I mean, we're very attached to materialism. It's true. And the ego. And I, I'm not judging on that, okay? It's just... It's just the way it has been. We've built up a whole world, and, and America is kind of the crowning example of this, of, you know, competition. We value that. We value, you know, I mean, it's just like on Facebook. If I put on a spiritual video, you know, or something, I might get 10 or 12 likes. If I, uh, you know, brag about something I did really good, a meal I cooked, or I got this degree or that, I could get, you know, 200 likes, <laughs> for example. I mean, the numbers might be different depending on how many friends you have at the moment or whatever. But you get my idea that, um, you know, we, we have created a, as a world that is based on the old paradigm of competition and one-upping each other. Um, and, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. We can, we can be in cooperation. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't be awesome. You should be awesome, and you should share your awesomeness with the world. That's not what this is about. Uh, in fact, it is this, the last rune here, Saul or Sawilo, is saying, yes, we should all shine our light, and we should return back to an awareness of the inner light. So it's a, it's a wonderful rune um, to have here. And yes, there is hope. There There is hope. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. I was just checking to see if there was anything I left out that I wanted to say on that. But not really. Um, you know, this is the ruin of that solar feminine light. So there is a lightening up, a brightening we're not there yet, though. We're not in this part of the reading, okay? Well, maybe we are. I mean, in some ways, I think some things are getting better. 
I mean, it's starting. It's starting. Uh, people are starting to pull together. It isn't all grief. It isn't all ordeal. Okay, look around. I mean, even on the mainstream news, which loves to just feed us fear. But then I can't blame them. Why did they do that? Because we eat it. We eat it up, right? I mean, if nobody paid attention to the fear-based stuff, they would quit putting that out there really quick, okay? Uh, so the, the media, even the politicians, all of them, they're all just expressions of the collective energy, our energy put together. Um, so as we change and shift, as we come more into the light, as we start paying more attention, you know, to uh, these stories of cooperation and love that are happening, well, there's going to be more of that. So in ending this reading today, I would just really encourage all of you, wh whatever your opinion on it is, I mean, even if you think it's all complete BS, and I, kn I know some people like that that think that, and, you know, you're, you're entitled to your opinion, but whatever you think about has caused it. And, and I know, I mean, this run, uh, run number, th what is it, three in the reading does indicate there's some misinformation. I mean, it, it could even relate to uh, some of the reports I've seen lately about China covering up. I, this isn't my theory, okay? I just seen this yesterday. Uh, I think it was CNNBC. Uh, there a couple of different news sources were saying there's an intelligence, American intelligence report release that says uh, China has uh, basically, you know, covered up the actual number of deaths. Now, I don't know if they really know that, you know. I mean, that's the theory, at least. So maybe there is some misinformation. You know, maybe it's, you know, I hear some people say it's worse than what they're saying. I hear other people saying, hey, it's not that bad. I mean, yes, people are dying. You know, there, there's all these different beliefs, but wherever you're coming at from it, I mean, I think we can agree that the world needs more love right now, more kindness. Um, you know, we are going through this spiritual initiation. Whatever you think about why, what caused this, I mean, it is happening. Again, let's just open to reality. You know, this is what is happening. We are going through an initiation. Things will never be the same. And, you know, the wise person during that time connects with their guides. I mean, opens their heart. And also, this is probably a video from their time, but stays in trust. Stays in trust. Trust of spirit. Trust of spirit. Trust in the ancestors to lead the way. Trust in your guides. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm focusing on. And that's what I'm getting out of this reading. And, you know, I will accept the challenge. I will go through the initiation and I will open to it. Uh, because what other choice do I have at the end of the day? I mean, I guess we could spend energy fighting it, but I'd rather just open to it, the experience, and let it happen and see how it leads us all to go inward to better express the inner light. On that note, I'm Psychic Cynthia with my guides and the power and spirit of the runes asking you to be blessed on all levels. And I ask the ancestors for their help and guidance for all of humanity now at this time. Until next time, peace, love, blessings to you all, bright blessings.